Hey everyone, this is PhD sports scientist Dr. Will O'Connor and you're listening to the Running with Dr. Will podcast. The show for runners who want to get faster using the latest in running science and technology. Running is going through a huge boom right now and more runners than ever are looking to take their running to the next level. In the show, I break down the science and the tech so you can run faster for less effort. Let's go. Oh man, heart rate training. I, I know you've tried it and you've probably said something, especially if you've tried like a, a film methadone approach or this, you know, low heart rate based training. Oh man, this is way too slow. Like I can't, can't even run this slow. This, is, this just can't work. Uh, maybe my heart rate monitor is reading wrong. And if you're using wrist space, it possibly is. But running your next PB, I tell you, it relies heavily on your aerobic system and heart rate is going to be one of the best ways to monitor the development of your aerobic system, your engine. So from 5Ks upwards, 98% of your performance is fueled by your aerobic system, 98% from 5K. I know it feels like uh, (laughs) that you're absolutely boxed and you're going, I hate this term, but you're going lactic, it's lactate, but that's definitely... (laughs) It's, it's happening, okay, you have an anaerobic component, uh, but it's nowhere near what you think. Underlying any endurance performance is going to be your aerobic system. The bigger aerobic system you have, the bigger foundation you have to build speed and performance on top of. So when you're doing your easy aerobic runs too fast, which a lot of us are, I mean Strava's horrible for this, running pace as a metric is horrible for this. You're adding unnecessary non-specific stress to your physiological system. Your hormonal system is just becoming too stressed and it's non-specific to building the most important thing to endurance performance, which is your your metabolic economy, your fuel utilization, your aerobic engine. So more often than not, look, the result is that when you're when you're doing your easy runs too hard, that your your races never align with your training and you just you're unsure all the time as to like why your performances are so sporadic and sometimes you're smashing intervals, sometimes you're not, sometimes you're able to cruise for 30 Ks, sometimes you can, you know, you're falling apart after 90 minutes. So it's due to a lack of aerobic development and most probably chronically elevated systemic fatigue. So when we when we use a, a heart rate monitor to control our aerobic runs, you can ensure that you're training for maximal aerobic capacity and stimulation. So the ideal training zone for most runners is zone one to zone two. So that's anywhere from like 70% to 88 to 90% really of your anaerobic threshold. Depends what zone system you use, but it's kind of 70 to in the 70s to 80s, like no higher than 90% of your threshold, uh, anaerobic threshold is going to be like that bread and butter golden zone, maximal fat utilization zone. So most apps that you have on your phone um, or associated with your device, Garmin, Strava, whatever, they're going to auto-calculate your threshold and zones. Mm, I, they're going to do it off of maximal um, your max heart rate, which I'll get into in like another episode, but your max heart rate is really just a measure of how fast your heart beats. <laughs> uh, it's not It's not actually going to directly represent your anything capacity, really, uh, because uh, it's, it's so individual and it can depend on a lot of hormonal and autonomic systems. Um, so if you, yeah, if you can trust it, sure. If you know, like, oh, yeah, my maximal heart rate has always been around 190 consistently, whereas if you uh, have suffered with injury, um, burnout, or you're new to running or high-intensity running, um, you're not wearing a heart rate strap, like, your maximal heart rate's most probably going to be uh, giving you a bad reading um, in relation to setting your zones. So what I'd recommend is double check your threshold, your threshold heart rate, just by finding the average heart rate from the last 20 minutes or the peak 20 minute heart rate of a 
10k race or a half marathon hopefully within the last six months but it's not going to change too much and typically it's going to be 170 to 180 for a lot of people um input that to to one of these systems one like strava garmin whatever and that'll that'll give you an indication of of what your zone one zone two is let's just not worry about the other zones three and up zone one zone two regardless though if you're like oh that's way above me I have no idea how to set any of these zones. Cool. Just just use the basics. There's hardly ever going to be a case where your zone two is set to like 170 and some you're going to be, you know, running above threshold just to stay in zone two. It's typically going to be slightly too high, not massively too high. And you don't need to run at the very top anyway. So that's like kind of setting up your zones and your, your threshold just briefly. So then we're going to get into like training zone one zone two and why so many people find it so damn hard to run so slow and why you end up running so slow if you haven't done if you've been running unstructured cruising around the neighborhood just like doing whatever you feel like um group runs that are way too hard then you're going to come in you're going to put your heart rate monitor on hopefully you're going to get a heart rate strap for better accuracy and you're like, well, this is slow. Like sometimes I even have to walk the hills. That happened to me when I um, was chronically overtrained. I was like, I need to sort my stuff out. Uh, and the reason for this is it's a lack of this aerobic engine, this aerobic base, this uh, utilization of fats and oxygen at um, a really high work rates. Instead, you have really this small aerobic system and you quickly begin to rely on glycolysis, the utilization of glycogen carbohydrates in the absence of uh, oxygen because your oxygen carrying capacity and your metabolic functions uh, aren't well developed because of the way you've been training and the level of stress, systemic stress you've been operating at. So here, here's what we can do. Look, so your aerobic system is the engine that powers your muscles during endurance exercise. So if we think aerobic respiration, uh, which is the, I guess, scientific terms of you like converting oxygen and fats or carbohydrates into ATP, adenine, adenine triphosphate, so the, the energy currency of the cell, occurs in the mitochondria. All right, so you might remember the powerhouse of the cell from school. So the, mitre, the more mitochondria you have, the more energy you can utilize for muscular contractions. The more ATP we can create, more ATP, the more energy currency we have to spend. And we want to spend as much as possible because the more we spend, the faster we can move. Bigger muscular contractions, longer stride length, more ground reaction force. Um, yeah, more uh, we can improve our, our overall running speed for the same effort. And that's the important thing, for the same effort. So when we use a heart rate monitor, we can monitor our aerobic capacity because when your aerobic capacity is low, your muscle, muscle, muscular contractile level will be low because anytime you try and increase your, your level of muscular contraction, so you, you're cruising along the flats and then you get to a hill and you want to, you know, obviously run up the hill. You don't want to walk. So you need to most probably increase your level of muscular contraction so you can exert more force so that you can continue to run up the hill. Boom, you see it, your heart rate's up. Your heart rate just, it was sitting nicely in the 140s and now it's creeping towards 160 and you you feel like you're barely even really trying much harder. Well, what's happening there is that you need to improve, like you need to increase the muscle recruitment so that you increase a larger muscle mass to exert more force. And these require more muscle fibers. And these muscle fibers aren't, aren't packed with a lot of mitochondria. And so their aerobic capacity, their capacity for aerobic respiration, converting oxygen and fat or carbohydrate into ATP is limited. But you need this energy. You need, you need the ATP to continuously contract these muscles at the level you're trying to contract them. So you, you increase your ATP production via non-oxidative means, which is anaerobic. So then you start to generate lactate. Now you need to provide more oxygen and you need to remove the excess CO2 and um, other metabolic byproducts so that 
you, you know, you maintain blood pH. And so your heart rate's high. You, you've increased your heart rate and now you've, you've changed the metabolic physiological hormonal stimulus that you're trying to do to increase your mitochondrial capacity within your muscles. And now you're, you're in that gray zone. So, so when most runners start training with heart rate and they lack the aerobic capacity in their muscles, they run, they have to run slowly, slowly so that their mitochondria um, can build slowly within targeted uh, within the targeted muscles and uh, stimulus that we're looking for without chronically elevating your systemic stress from greater anaerobic stress because you're always just you're not allowing yourself consistently chronically to develop your aerobic system you just keep running too hard you just oh well it doesn't matter i'll just you know as long as my average heart rate sits in the zone then then i'm fine but actually what's happening is you 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 keep increasing the acidic acidic stress within the muscles and then you you elevate your the amount of recovery required between runs in order for the muscle environment and the myocellular environment to set reset homeostasis and within that you're never asking i guess the muscle to develop its mitochondria which happened which you can do when you limit your anaerobic stress within your easy runs. And I'm not saying you have to do this forever or um, chronically. You can still do hard training. You can listen to the episode around uh, high-intensity interval training, which you can implement in a base phase. But it is when you need to be running long, you need to be running easy, you need to do that in a fashion that is going to implement a specific stress to the desired outcome and so when we have a heart rate monitor on and we're forced to slow down we're forced to slow down for very good reason it is that our aerobic capacity is not in line with our i guess our expectations or our, the demands of what we're asking our muscles or body i guess to to do the work rate we're not able to work at the the rate that we are asking of our body, so whatever that is, five minute Ks, six minute Ks, eight minute mile, uh, you can't do that aerobically. And if you are not developing the process to do that, you will never be able to do that aerobically. And so then you're going to really struggle to build speed and add an anaerobic threshold, maximal lactate steady state, absolute speed on top of this really sandy base like if you don't you're not going to build a house on sand you want to build it a really rigid structured nice based uh firm compact uh platform for you to be able to build a really stable house and that house is going to be your absolute performance whether it's ultra marathon or a 1500 meter if you don't have the underlying anaero like aerobic Base, you just can't build a really well-rounded athlete runner on top of that. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to challenge yourself. Just two weeks, okay? So just for two weeks, go out. Four weeks is better. Two weeks uh, without your heart rate going over zone two. Okay, so obviously if you've got some kind of race coming up, now's not going to be the best time. But you can still, for two weeks, just don't even let your heart rate go above zone two. Whatever zone two it is, um, just don't let it go above heart rate zone two. Try and run at the lower end of zone two, so maybe more of that 80% threshold rather than up towards 90. And then I want you to do the same loop uh, or route, whatever, uh, three times within that and measure the progress over the two weeks. So right at the start, the middle, and the end, and see if you're able to progress your speed at heart rate. So try and fix your heart rate for these specific runs. So whatever it is, you know, 140 to 150, starting off like low in the zone and then maybe allowing your heart rate to increase uh, throughout the run, whether it be 30 minutes or 45 an hour. Uh, and 
even if you don't improve across two weeks, there's a very short amount of time for physiological adaptation to occur, I can almost guarantee that you will feel amazing with your running after two weeks. If you're not running faster, you'll be you'll feel fresher and you'll be enjoying your running more. And from that point, you will start to recognize the benefits of restricting your effort level on your easy runs. Now, I'm only talking about this on your easy or aerobic runs. I'm not talking about this on your targeted sessions, although warm-ups and cool-downs are also very important to minimize your intensity. But that's that's what we want to do. Okay, so go out two weeks. Don't let your heart rate go above zone two. Flick me a message if you're struggling, otherwise, you know, to figure out your zones. Otherwise, look, jump on uh, jump in the description, jump on my Instagram website, download uh, my my secret pro coach's formula for running massive PBs, and uh, you may just get yourself an invite to one of my private training webinars. Um, you could also see the uh, next intake of Reignite Your Running, All right, my my high-touch group coaching program where I take you from, you know, you're training from an unstructured mess to a consistent, weekly, targeted, event-specific roadmap that you can implement reusable, personalized, scientifically backed, um, targeting your next PB, and you'll just achieve that in, in record time. So you may see that. Depends on what time of the year you're jumping in. But otherwise, definitely go message me, you know, listen to some of the other episodes, jump on and get my uh, my formula, and uh, you'll be you'll be away laughing. All right. Till next time, guys. Happy running. That's Dr. Will. Hey teams, thanks for listening. If you're looking to get more tips, tricks, and advice from me, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Dr. Will O'Connor and share like, review, give some stars for the episode. It really helps me get the word out and I hugely appreciate it. If you do so, give me a tag on Instagram. I'll be sure to share your stories and reach out via the DMs. All right, till next time, guys. Have a good one.